Hey, and welcome to the Headliner Podcast. My name is Nick, and I'm joined today by Oliver. We've got a really exciting show for you. We're going to talk about cool things that we're doing in the office and our brand new app. That's right. We're yep. talking about the mobile app. Mm-hmm. Before we get into it, Nicholas, what kind of phone do you have? I see it over there. I actually can't tell the difference between Android and iPhones anymore. Yeah, neither can I. I mean, my like old man wallet case doesn't help. Doesn't help. I think you have an Android. Yes. I have an iPhone. Okay. And so when we're talking about the app, are we talking we're talking about the same app, right? It's yep. the same on both, so it doesn't matter which device we're it on. It doesn't matter. They are completely identical, basically. All right. We found out that a lot of our users, they were having a hard time, not even a hard time, they just wanted an easier way to get their completed videos and share it onto social media. Mostly so, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, Instagram is a pain to share, too, if you don't have the media on your phone. Yeah. So, went ahead, we made an app. With the app, you can access all of your exported videos, as well as set up automation feeds. I mean, you can basically just take your completed videos, share them to Instagram, all from the comfort of this app. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Yeah. It's pretty basic. It's just what it gets the job done. Yeah, exactly. So, so Nicholas, I thought it would be fun this week... If, if you want to pull up that app and, and we can kind of do like kind of like a guided walkthrough meditation type sure thing. A guided meditation yeah. on how to use the app why not so just yeah i'm going to open my app did you open it yep okay i'm going to open it right okay We're both, are you in yes <laughs> okay i got the, i already logged in so I'm, I'm already in so tell me what you see when you first log in so as soon as you log into the app what you see over here is basically just a list of all your videos that have been exported if no, no, I know that. You're, I'm not, that you're explaining it. Oh, okay. I'm literally saying, like, imagine we're oh. not mic'd up right now. Okay. We're just chatting. I'm two just guys in a booth at a WeWork. And I'm like, hey, what's on your phone, man? All right. Um, the first thing I see on the app is a clip from episode 217 of Off Camera with Sam Jones. What's that? That is, that's like my podcast of choice. It's a show where, like, actors hang out and they just talk about acting and all that nerdy stuff. Is it nerdy? It's pretty nerdy. I thought about this the other day, actually. Like, I was listening to, like, I think, um, I thought about this a few times, but, mm-hmm. like, you think of actors as being so cool and tough. Yeah. But then, like, there's also this other narrative in the media of, like, the nerdy drama kids. Mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. But it's like, wait a minute, it's all the same people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's literally just like, oh, I'm on Kimmel, so I'm going to sound, like, really cool and interesting. Versus, like, an hour later, they're just on their phone probably listening to some other actor talk about their life. I don't know. Like, yeah. I think actors are just kind of like geeky in general. Uh, yeah, I say that as a former theater kid, though. So I like, I saw people like geeking out about like acting. Yeah, I mean, I was only like involved in musical theater. Okay. Uh, in a high school and high school. Yeah. I didn't, I, I mean, it, I like really like it, but it was, uh, I'm not a good singer. So it kind of <laughs> limited me with my options, but. Yep, been there. That kind of specific niche is is its own. Mm-hmm. It's like the cross section of music and acting. Yeah. So you can imagine it gets. Yeah, I mean, horrible. in my experience, like all the people I ever like did anything with, if you go to the movies with them, people just actively hate going to the movies with like theater people. Oh, I think yeah. that's gen. Yeah, I think that's genuinely the rule because, especially with me, they'll like be watching a movie, and you know, when you're watching a movie, you're just watching it. Maybe you're like talking to a buddy during it. But every theater person I've ever gone to the movies with is, like, dissecting it live. Like, you wouldn't be that surprised if one of them pulled out, like, a pocket notebook and started, like, jotting down, like, things they noticed. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just trying to watch Star Wars. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. That's like my brother. He's a, he has a PhD in ethnomusicology. So yeah. if you listen to the right type of music, he'll be like, do you hear the polyrhythms? And I'm like, uh... It's a very me thing to say. Yeah. And I'm like, I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. And he's like... Oh. <laughs> like you have a, you're a doctor in this, like, yeah. but yeah, I, I think there's a you know enjoying versus how people enjoy. Yeah, yeah. If you're really into something, it becomes hard to enjoy it. No, exactly. One of my friends can't watch like American Idol or any music show because if she tries to watch those shows, she's gonna start rearranging in her head, <laughs> like what she's hearing. Oh, really? Yeah, she'll be like, oh, this should be like a bit slower. This should be in a different key. And I'm like, no, <laughs> stop. Like, we're just trying to watch this. They're, they're, they're a little pitchy at the verse. The second yeah. verse, they were a little pitchy. Ooh, they didn't need to put some vibrato there. It's like, okay, well, please stop. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's all. Yeah, but anyhow, so 
you see a video from a, a film podcast. Yeah, exactly. And then if I want, then what else do you see? You, you can so you can play it. Yep, you can play it. You can share it. What happens um, if you click the share button? Well, on Android, because of just the way Android works, it downloads a copy of it to your phone. Uh -huh. So that first off, if you just want a copy of it, it's there forever until you delete it. So I guess not forever. And you also get. <laughs> do you have a cat? I don't. I'm actually allergic. Me too. Oh, fun. Someone with a cat was in here. Someone We're just left a cat up. in here for an hour. <laughs> oh my god. It's okay. We're in a very small booth in a WeWork. Yeah. Someone may have sat down here with a cat. We don't know. <laughs> But okay, we're yeah. gonna make it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna truck through it. So yeah, when you hit share on Android, at least it opens a list of first your most used contacts in case you want to send it directly to them. Yep. Your various Google Drive folders that you use often, and then all of the social media apps on your phone. So yep. From the app, I can share to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit. Everything. Yeah, I can same. even send it to Buffer if I same, want. Same, same on the iPhone. Can, yeah, nice. So it's yeah, you know, I don't know if the processing behind is different or not, but I think the you only, click the button, it's the downloading at first. Yeah, the only difference is that on Android, it actually downloads to your gallery, whereas gotcha. on iPhone, it doesn't. Also, here uh, Apple has an AirDrop, so that's true. There's always this idea: say you're on a subway in New York City and you want to promote your podcast or your video. You get on a subway train, you go to Times Square, you hit that airdrop button, and bam, anyone that's, is going to get a that's little... That's some stealth marketing right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty clever. Okay, so... Uh, no, what were you going to say? Sorry. Oh, no, I was also going to say, like... Yeah, I mean, you can share all your videos and stuff. There's another page, though, that shows just specifically your automated feed. So Is that that magic wand on top? Yep, so it's actually the center button on the top of the app. It'll show all the various feeds you have going. You'll be able to delete them if you want to. On top of that, I believe I was mistaken. I thought clicking on it opened your latest clip from it. But yeah, you'll be able to no, delete that, that could be coming. Yeah. And on top of that, if you want to create a new feed, you could do it from your phone. You just hit the plus button on it. Oh, on the bottom right over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can look up any old podcast. Um, I don't know. First podcast that comes to your mind. 30 for 30? Okay. 30 for 30. You hit search. It'll pull up the podcast. And then you can tell it, hey, I want to receive a 60-second clip every day. Mm -hmm. Or I just want a clip for the latest episode one time only. Um, I want a full episode for it. You know, whatever video you're looking for. And then you can pick your template and start getting videos for it. So just like on the desktop. Yeah, it's the same as the desktop, just on mobile. Okay, yeah. I get it. I mean, it's pretty simple. I think you get it. I get it. It's in the App Store mm -hmm. under, you just search for Headliner Video, I believe. Yep, Headliner Video. It'll come up on the App Store. You'll see that Headliner H in our, you know, blue and purple gradient. Yeah, that Headliner H. That Headliner H, you know. So what do you think? Where do you think do you think people are going to use this? Yeah, I think so. I've, I've noticed, so I do, like, support here. Like, obviously, when people have questions or need help, they usually just, like, email me or right into our support. Right. So we've actually noticed that a lot of people are using the app already, you know. And mm -hmm. like people who have in the past had trouble sharing, especially from an iPhone, we've written back to them with the app and they're like, this is exactly what I need. I just literally open this app and my clip goes to Instagram now. Right. You know. So it's kind of like the perfect solution. Once you finish making your videos on desktop, you open your phone. You don't have to worry about like turning on airdrop, you don't have to remember to Google Drive something to yourself or right. get an email. It's just the app. So it's easy. Yeah, super easy. Um, on top of that, I mean, no, I mean, that's, that's it. That's the app in a nutshell. So, I have another question for you. Okay. What's the weirdest thing you use your phone for? <laughs> weirdest thing I use my... Um, it's not that weird. It's just very on brand for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how's, how's that for <laughs> I'm treading lightly here yeah. um, no the coolest thing I use my the weirdest thing I use my phone for is actually just like video stuff yeah so obviously I'm like a huge film geek but I don't want to carry around a DSLR everywhere I go but I also don't want to sacrifice customizable video so I have a different app called filmic pro and what it does is it basically turns your cell phone camera into a DSLR um, huh. it gives you manual focus. It gives you all of these settings that nobody notices except for me. 
and it also shoots. Well, what's an example of like a setting that nobody would notice? Because um, I don't understand how this stuff works that much, but I have taken a few photography classes. Okay, so, so like shutter speed and okay. stuff. Um, is it actually changing the shutter speed? Yeah. It, like it really adjusts the shutter of the camera. It is really changed. Well, I mean, digital cameras don't have shutters, but yeah, it's doing. Okay. It's like treating the footage so that it has like the look. Of a shutter. Wait, wait, wait. Slow down. There's okay. no shutter on a digital camera. Because there's a sensor instead. So the sensor... I always thought for some reason... I don't know much about cameras, obviously. Yeah. So the shutter is the device mm -hmm. that... Opens and closes right. when you take a picture. Of for it. those of you listening, I just snap my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put in a little snap sound. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's the little thing that like comes down in a pinhole camera, for example. Yeah. The shutter would be just like the piece of paper you put over the pinhole. Yeah, like, exactly. Right. Okay. So, a sensor is it just like it's always is the camera just always putting stuff. If the yeah. sensor is kind of like, does the sensor have a shutter that just accepts the information on onto the so. sensor chip or like? I don't know the technical side of it that much. I actually literally skimmed an article that explained it like a week ago, and yeah. I still don't know it. But it's something like the refresh rate on the sensor is your quote-unquote shutter speed. That's like the fast explanation of it. Um, so it allows you to customize that, and the way that changes your footage is if you have a really fast shutter, you won't have motion blur when you're like filming video and someone's moving their hand. Right. That's how they do like slow motion. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a really slow shutter, you do get motion blur. And then for people who are really into film, they typically want double their frame rate as their shutter speed. Uh -huh. So like with this app, I'm able to film things with a 148th shutter, which is what film is shot in. Oh, okay. So um, then you can do awesome slow-mo from your phone? Yeah, if I want to do slow-mo, I have the ability to. Um, just all this really like minute stuff that when you put it together makes something look like a movie. Gotcha. Um, it also films footage flat, which is like the rule in filmmaking. So basically when you use like a film camera or anything digital these days, they film an image that is super boring. There is like next to no color on it. There's no contrast. It's flat. Mm -hmm. And then when they put it on a computer, because it was a flat image, there's a lot of data in there. Right, it's like shooting raw, kind of. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same principle. Just taking it. It's like taking in all the. It's like kind of like saying that. The way I never always understood that is like, tell me if this is right. You're yeah. just telling the camera like, take everything in. Yeah, and take then later we'll like have the actual settings. Exactly. So you're kind of as the photographer, you're just capturing the actual framing of it and not worrying about anything else. Yeah, you're not worrying about the lighting too much. You're not. You know, yeah. you're just catching all the data so that you can use it later right. if you need to. And, um, yeah, I've been kind of just using my phone for the past, like, basically since Thanksgiving, because I got the app around then. It was on sale. And I got it. I've been playing with it, just, like, filming random stuff on the way to work and, you know, yeah. opening up Final Cut and playing with it afterwards and all that stuff. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I'm also, like, kind of considering playing with Premiere Rush on my phone. Hmm. which is like a mobile version of Adobe Premiere that you can then, over the cloud, send to just regular Premiere. Mm. So I'm like half considering playing with it just to see how that works. Right. You know. Yeah, we're in this place too, I think, with the, the mobile app ourselves yeah. where it's like how much more creative stuff do we add to it. Yeah, exactly. Cause, Cause, you know, it's like, because it's like, you have to be pretty dedicated to <laughs> start, like, I mean, you're talking about like making a essentially like a film school grad over here. Yeah. Going in and getting a special app to fine tune everything. Mm -hmm. And that's like, we're having the same kind of discussions in some of the meetings now. Of like, okay, like how much of Headliner should be in the mobile app? Exactly. Like, where's the glass ceiling? Because after a while, in the case of like trying to edit a movie on your phone, right? Like, there's a point where that just becomes unnecessary. <laughs> right, right, you know? right, right. And that's why, yeah, the first version of the app just has, like, share and automation. Because yeah. those things, like, you push a few buttons, make a few selections, and you have videos. Yeah, and that's, like, the direct thing that, you know, needs to be taken care of, on your phone at least. Yeah. Um, I do think it's cool, like, the idea of making videos on your phone. I, I just also think there's just a point where, like, you do need a computer. Right. For, for some certain things. things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right, what else? Is there anything else we should talk about this week? Um, well, I mean, you published a pretty cool Medium article. 
this yeah. week, didn't you? Yeah. We put a, yeah, we put an article out for... Um, we released this like prototype site called Headliner Flicks. And it's a, a mashup of the UI of Netflix, but all the videos on it are created on Headliner. So yeah. they're all actually... All the clips are selected through our automation tool. Mm-hmm. And then uh, most of the clips were just automation videos. Some of them, uh, Bailey made some really cool videos for some of the like featured ones. And yeah, you can just check it out at headlinerflix.com. Yeah, it's like we yeah we I went I went really fast trying to get it all out. <laughs> so now I have to I didn't I just picked like whatever podcasts were there. So I have to go back and kind of add in some new podcasts. And then about seventy people have actually emailed in their podcasts to be added. So I have to start adding those in. Cool. I think it could become a pretty big big thing so definitely worth checking out yeah yeah it was really cool i mean i saw you working on the site and then obviously when it came out i just hopped on it and it is like actually really cool i really love the um the videos that bailey made for it especially yeah yeah the dolly parton one's my favorite <laughs> yeah the dolly of course was great. <laughs> yeah um yeah no and that's that's basically what we've been up to is there anything else you think we should go over well we have the holiday break coming up that's true. We do have the holidays. So by the time this drops, it'll be holiday time. Yeah. And after that, it'll be 2020, a whole new decade. <laughs> so much fun. The roaring 20s. The roaring 20s all over again. Yep. I'll be sure to like start 2020 on the right foot. I'll read The Great Gatsby. Yep. You know, that's an excellent that's way to start. Great Gatsby. Uh, go to some speakeasies. Yeah. Go to a speakeasy. And... I think you're supposed to smoke cigarettes with those really long stem things and wear flowers yeah. in your hair. Yeah, that's true. Feathers, mm. not feathers. Feathers? Fe- feathers? Feathers? Flo- feathers, yeah. yeah. I think the feather thing. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of cigarettes to be smoked in this. So decade. we'll we'll have another Roaring Twenties, except like hopefully this one won't end in the Great Depression. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, but it might start ten, with one. It's <laughs> ten years before another one presumably happens to us. Yeah. So nine years in a couple of days. Yeah, nine years in a couple of days, you're right. Yeah. So. But yeah. Awesome. Well, until next time. Yep, until next time. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. And yeah, bye. <laughs>